If you're a fan of the channel, then you do know that I love me some science and astronomy is my favorite of all the sciences. Now, whenever I tell people that or bust out the telescope, they always say, oh, I love this. I am a Taurus or I'm a Gemini. Now, what they're talking about is astrology and astrology and astronomy are two very different things. If you've ever wondered what exactly the difference is, then you're in the right place. I'm Mr. Wilson. Welcome to class. So what is the difference between astronomy and astrology? Both of them are related to the night sky. Now astrology in particular is interested in the constellations and the movement of the stars and planets. Astronomy is an actual science and is interested in everything in space. Because astronomy is an actual science, it, it focuses on learning how the universe works and understanding all of the intricacies related to that. Astrology is more of a superstition than anything else. The idea is that the position of the sun on the day that you were born can impact your personality. Now, some astrologers will even take it a step further and say that the positions of the stars and planets can even impact your life on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, almost falling into the realm of uh, prophecy and so forth. So we can see that astrology and astronomy are two very different concepts. In order to understand where they're similar and where they separate, we really have to understand what exactly astrology is. So we're going to start by looking at that one. Now the idea is that throughout the year the Sun will appear to wander through uh, several different constellations. I'm going to be using an astronomy planetarium program to uh, show you where the Sun and stars are. What's really cool about this program is we can fast forward and rewind it to any point in history so that we can see where all of the objects are at any given time. Let's go ahead and look to the sky. So here we are seeing a little simulation of where the sun is today at this exact time. And you can see that if I uh, change the time here, I can uh, fast forward and the sun will start to set and then the, the moon and the stars and stuff will start to come out. Now as we look around this to the untrained eye, this can be quite intimidating. We just see a bunch of dots. So the uh, program will help us identify where objects are. Here I see a little uh, area for constellations. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the labels so that all of the constellations will be labeled for us. And I'll go ahead and turn on this stick figure which will uh, kind of connect the dots and then we'll um, look around and we'll see what constellations are in the sky. Now what is a constellation? The idea is that the brightest stars in the night sky form these little drawings. Now ancient people, they didn't have televisions and stuff to keep them occupied and oftentimes it was quite hot in the house and so to get away from the heat they would go out and they would sit on top of their roof or they would sit outside and with nothing else to look at, remember the light bulb doesn't exist in these early times, so really the night sky was the only thing you had to watch. And so they would see these same patterns night after night and they would start to make up stories about them. They'd say. It's, it's sort of like this. Have you ever watched a cloud drift by and you say that cloud looks like an elephant and that cloud looks like a giraffe? It's the same thing with the constellations. They would say that group of stars looks like a hunter and he's chasing a bull. And so they would come up with all these elaborate stories about the, the shapes that they saw in the sky. And that's what we're looking at here. Today we call these shapes constellations. 
And as we look around, we can see that there are just absolutely tons of constellations. Some of them might sound familiar, like we've all seen the Big Dipper here, which is actually part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major. Here's the Little Dipper here. And you've probably heard of a few of these ones as well. Here's Gemini and Cancer, Leo, if those three in particular are sounding familiar to you, it's because they're part of what we call the signs of the zodiac. And this is an astrology concept. Of all these constellations in the night sky, astrologers are only interested in 12. And how do you pick your 12 favorites? It's not by random. It's not based on the brightness or the largeness of the constellation. It's based on the idea that the sun is going to pass through each of these constellations throughout the year. Let's go ahead and fast forward the clock so that you can see what I'm talking about. Here I'm going to uh, fast forward time to make the sun come back up again. Now we can still see the constellations even during the daytime. That's pretty cool. The stars don't go away when the sun comes up. It's just that the sun is so bright that the light from the sun completely washes out the stars and you can't see them anymore, but they're still there. And as we look here, we can see that on this particular date, the sun is actually getting quite close to the constellation Taurus. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to advance day by day. I'm going to leave the time the same. So it's going to be uh, stay about 1030 in the morning, but I'm going to go day by day. And we'll see that as I advance the days, the sun appears to wander through the sky, passing completely through the constellation Taurus. And as I continue, to fast forward, we can see that next it's going to pass through Gemini, and next it's going to pass through Cancer, and then through Leo, and then through Virgo. It's going to wander its way through a variety of constellations, but only 12. To astrologers, this is the most important concept. If you were born when the sun was in the constellation Leo, then they would say that you or a Leo, that's your astrological sign. And then they're going to attribute all kinds of um, qualities to you. They'll say, oh, you know, Leos are, uh, I don't know, they have aggressive personalities or they're delightful people that everybody loves. I don't know. There's different traits for every one of these. Now, I am an astronomer. I am interested in the science of the night sky. And I really know nothing about astrology other than these basic concepts of how it works. So if you ask me what qualities qualities are associated with uh, uh, Scorpio, I'm not going to be able to tell you. But let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about this concept. So I just showed you how the sun is going to appear to wander through all of these constellations. In fact, I could draw a line called the ecliptic. I'll go ahead and turn that on. And this line here is the path that the sun appears to follow through the night sky. If I hide the ground so that uh, it doesn't get in our way, and we look through here, we can see that this line is going to pass through all of those familiar constellations uh, the signs of the zodiac, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, all the way through this line will pass through just those 12 constellations. So the next question is, how do we know where the sun moves out of one constellation and into the next? There's a feature here called boundaries. If I turn that on, what it will do is it will draw these boxes around each of the constellations. And so we say that once the sun has crossed out of one box and into the next box, that that's how we make the distinction of where one constellation ends and the next one begins. So here we can pull up a chart. I just pulled this one off of uh, the internet someplace and we can see the, the dates that uh, from March 21st through April 20th, that if you're born within that date range, then you would be an Aries. So what we just learned is that the sun should be in the constellation Aries during this date range. Let's go ahead and fast forward to March 21st and see if it's right. March 21st. Here we can see that the sun is actually in the constellation Pisces. 
If I go to April 20th, I should be just crossing out of Aries. April 20th. It looks like I'm leaving Pisces right now and on April 20th, I'm crossing into Aries. So here where Aries is supposed to be ending, we see that it's actually just beginning. In fact, the sun will leave the constellation of Aries right around here, May 14th. So what we see here is that according to this chart, the dates are completely wrong. So did I just pull up a bad chart? Actually, no. There, to understand what's going on here, we have to understand a little bit about how the Earth moves through space. So we're going to pretend that this is a, a little model of the solar system. This is going to be our sun and this is going to be the Earth. Obviously, this isn't to scale. Um, and then this is going to be a constellation in the far distance over here. And this is a different constellation over here. So we all know that the Earth rotates on its axis, but it also revolves around the sun like this. So here we might say that uh, when the Earth gets to this particular point or around the sun, uh, we would say that it appears to perfectly line up with this purple constellation here. So from our perspective here on Earth, it looks like the sun is in the constellation purple ball. But then as the Earth uh, revolves around the sun a little bit more, now it looks like it lines up with this green ball constellation instead. What many people forget is that this isn't the only motion that the Earth does. Not only does it rotate on its axis and revolve around the sun, but that the entire solar system is also moving through space. So 2,000 years ago, when the astrologers first put their charts together, they saw that at this particular time of the year, the Earth was in, in fact uh, lined up with this constellation here. But then after 2000 years, the planet, the entire solar system has moved through space. And now at this time of the year, we're lined up with a totally different constellation. Now, as I had mentioned before, I'm not an astrologer, so there may well be some kind of explanation for why they haven't updated their charts in 2000 years. But from my perspective, it, this looks like a gross oversight. If the position of the sun is supposed to determine your uh, astrological sign and that astrological sign is therefore supposed to uh, predict everything from your personality to whether or not you're going to be successful in life, etc., then it seems like you would want to be working with accurate data. And this is uh, not accurate. So if I actually roll the clock back like 2000 years, we'll see that the chart, while still not perfectly accurate, is more accurate than it is today. So let's do that. I'm going to take the clock back to the year one. And let's look at those dates one more time. We see that Aries is supposed to begin on March 21st. March 21st. And you can see that we're quite a bit closer. We're still just a little bit in Pisces, but we are getting really close to Aries. And it was supposed to end on April 20th. Let's go ahead and go to April 20th. And we can see that we have officially crossed into Taurus, but we're pretty close. We, we are right on that threshold. So here, 2000 years ago, the chart was much more accurate. But over the course of 2000 years, astrologers apparently didn't understand this concept and never bothered to update the charts. So now 2000 years, modern day astrologers are using charts that are horribly outdated. Now, if you are a believer in astrology, it seems like this would be an important concept because you're assuming that the sun is someplace where it's completely not. And if that location has something to do with your life, wouldn't that be information that you would want to keep up on? So what we learn from this is that astrology is not a science at all. It more falls into the area of a superstition. Now, we know that astronomy, the actual science of space, also uses constellations, but it uses them for a totally different purpose. The constellations used by astronomers are primarily used for navigation. Let me take you to the night sky and I'll show you what I mean. Here, let's go to the evening. So I'm just going to uh, roll the hour past. 
past these daylight hours and we'll watch the sun set and the stars will come out and we can see the constellations. Uh, right now we're facing south. I'm going to go ahead and turn us all the way around to face the north because that's where we'll see some familiar constellations. Here's the Little Dipper, Ursa Minor, and here's the Big Dipper, Ursa Major. Now this time of the year is called the galaxy season and the reason for that is that there's actually a lot of galaxies out. If you have a telescope and know where to point it, uh, you'll be able to see lots of galaxies. So that's the big question. Where do I point my telescope? And that's what astronomers use constellations for. There are several galaxies in the constellation Ursa Major or the Big Dipper. Let's take a look at one of my favorites. Here as we face the Big Dipper, we can see that uh, a galaxy called Messier Object 101, the Pinwheel Galaxy, is located quite close to the tail of the Big Dipper. Now today we have fancy telescopes that have computerized mounts. You just type in, show me this thing, and it will just automatically point you to there. But when I was growing up, we didn't have those fancy computerized mounts. And so you actually had to take out a star chart and you would look at the two stars in the Big Dipper and you'd say, uh, looks like the thing I want to find out is about halfway between these two stars and about the same distance down from there. So for example, here I'd find this star and this star and kind to create a triangle with the object that I wanted to see and I'd point my telescope in this general direction and I would just start moving my telescope back and forth until I eventually found my target. Now here you can see that this is a very faint target indeed. It just shows up as a barely visible fuzzy blob on the screen. And so it was quite difficult to find your target. So these computerized mounts we have are uh, definitely a blessing. But if you don't have that, you can still use the old fashioned uh, star chart to navigate the night sky. Here I'll show you a picture of this galaxy that I took through my telescope uh, the other night. So astronomers are quite interested in constellations for navigation. They tell us where things are, and then we can point our telescopes at them, and we can study the light from those objects to learn more about what elements those objects are made out of, what temperatures they are, how, what mass they have, and therefore what kind of gravity they have. This is, astronomy is very much a science that we are seeking to learn more about how our universe works. And astrology, like I said, falls into the category of perhaps a superstition, if you will. But now you know the difference between astrology and astronomy. User interactions help my videos show up higher in the YouTube search results, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already, and like and leave a comment as well.